everyone. Welcome back to the second part of Prem Numbers by Suleika Snyder. And it's starring Courtney from The Cult of Domesticity, <laughs> if I can ever say that right. I hope you guys enjoy it. I know that some of the episode has got some funky audio issues. Sorry about that. Uh, sometimes when you record on Skype, things happen. But I hope you guys enjoy it. I've enjoyed discussing this with Courtney, and enjoy the rest of the show, guys. Oh, the last one was Tangled Up With You. This one's some sort of fairy tale. Yeah. I had them confused. Okay. I just, I have the Kindle book up, too, so. Um, oh, good. I'm glad you did. Mine was like, oh, I have to open up my phone to do that. Oops. So I have Kindle on my tablet, my Kindle, which is an old Kindle, and my phone. Because oh, I have a wow. problem, and I, my I computer, have, but I don't really use it on my computer. But I have I have it on my computer because then I can take my notes and put them in my little document and copy and paste them. Oh, <laughs> well, there's a website for it. It's so much easier to do it there. Oh, I know, I know. But like sometimes I don't always want my my notes, so I just yeah. I, get <laughs> I have it. to go through and see if I want my notes because I'm bad about that. I I completely get that. <laughs> Sometimes you over highlight, sometimes you under highlight, and then you're just mm. sitting there questioning yourself. Yes. Um, so this is a sort uh, of fairy tale. Yes. The last one was a tangled up, tangled up in you. Yep. Um, so this one is about the bakery owner, Marcella, and the guy's name is Bear. Yep. <laughs> or at least we think his name is Bear. Um, and so she starts this bakery and in no i don't know if it's not in the nicest neighborhood i don't i can't remember i think that. it's a i think it's like in a transition neighborhood it's not like it's not like the worst of gotham but it's not like you know mm-hmm. like the nice middle class area either it's like a working class i would say neighborhood yeah and then bear is working i think for his father-in-law or ex-father-in-law for seven years so it's like his wife died and he had to get control of his son, right? Yeah. So, um, he's like, he really, his choices really aren't his own right now. Mm-hmm. So I don't know when in this, I forget when in the seven years they meet, but I think they tell us later. So we'll bring that up. But Marcella, uh, basically she sees, I like three 20 something white men. She mentally nicknamed dumb, dumber, and pedejo. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I like it. Like, <laughs> English, English, Spanish. Got it. <laughs> Love it. Great. Well, um, there was that third one, so you had to really give them the, the proper name. <laughs> yeah. And she's afraid that her, oh, her shop is called Sweet Temptations, which I was like, I like it. Uh-huh. Her bakery, that's really good. Um, and it's a small bakery, so like the front, there's like a little, there's like the front uh, display area, and then there's like a little area. There's not like seats and stuff. Right. Um. So... They basically these guys kind of are creeping her out. She's getting the heebie-jeebies. There, and... There's definitely some. There's there's definitely some um sexual harassment on the rise coming soon. Sexual harassment or robbery happening. Yeah, because she, like, she's afraid they're gonna like mess up the shop, and she's like, yeah. I do not have the cash for this. I do not need this today. Which I was like, girl, I feel you. <laughs> I'm like half the time. I'm like, don't need this bullshit today. Yeah, let's go home today. now. Yep. Yeah. So basically, Bear walks up and acts like he knows her and saves her, like just because he's a nice person and that's what you should do. Right. You see some pendejos creeping on somebody. <laughs> you separate yeah. those people from the bad people. Yeah. So um, basically, he follows her inside and makes sure. Like, she's going to be okay. And he gives her some tips because he's a nice person. And she tries to, like, thank him for his kindness. Yeah. With some favors. Um, co- AKA coffee. Coffee. Yeah. The favor she yeah. tries to give him is coffee. Yeah. At least um, at first. Yeah. And then um, she's. She goes, oh, no cappuccino, she says, before she could stop herself. Just coffee, tea, or me. <laughs> I'm, like, <"Girl>, <laughs> I'm not mad. <laughs> and so um, they hook up in the back room. 
mm-hmm. have a great time. Um, and he has to leave. He goes, oh, and he goes, I'll be back. He said, mouth warm against her temple. I don't know when, but pro- princess, I promise I'll be back. And he gives her an own, um, half of a clay dog ring. So like the tiny heart and crown that the Irish use in it, like, um, you know, so it's like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Which wasn't that ring important because like, wasn't that his like wedding band ring or something? So his first wife, I think. Uh, Clendogan, you, which way you wear it tells people if you're single or taken. Yeah. yeah. So it's literally your heart in the Irish community. Um, I know some people that have them. And so it's like really significant to give someone one. Mm-hmm. But I felt like I, I felt like it was part of the thing from his marriage. Like he always wore it because um, it's been a while since I since I read that one. But yeah, that's but, the wrong book. <laughs> but I'll keep going. So yeah, sorry guys. I was on my Kindle and I was like, oh no, that was a book I was just reading like you know three hours ago. Yeah. Oh, it's been longer than it's at four hours ago now, but that's fine. But yeah, so all of a sudden, um, this guy comes back years later and orders something, puts a ten dollar bill, two quarters, and a gold ring, and so it's the center of. Uh, so basically, he gave her the heart part, mm-hmm. not the hands. Yeah. So now he put the hand part down. And so she wasn't like, you know, when you're doing that, you're kind of not really paying attention. You're like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And then she sees the ring and she's like, so what? <laughs> three years like, ago, three years ago, that's what it was. Because um, he says, one taste of you kept me going for three years. He growled like a the bear she met that long and ago night. Now I'm free, free to reclaim everything that's mine. And she instinctively moved to slip that ring from her fourth finger. Her hand shot out, uh, his hand shot out, stealing both of her own he goes no no that stays where it is and i'm just like <laughs> oh so yeah i was learn- i was learning that bear's name really is colin and then something was bear um yeah and so her son is tristan i think she just said it bear because he had a deep grumbly voice like it was yeah. just his voice that sounded like a bear um yeah he finally won custody from his grandfather and he wanted to have his son and her to make his life together and basically yeah and he goes she's asked where do we start and where we started before colin laughed joy unmistakable cupcakes and i was <laughs> like that's definitely a way to go about it like <laughs> i basically said we're gonna be a family but let's get cupcakes <laughs> <laughs> sure um i i will say that like bear like when he was bear he reminded me a lot of like Mel Gibson and Payback or like mm-hmm. Charles Bronson. Um, and Mel Gibson, he plays like in Payback, he plays like a two bit thief and, and, you know, kind of thug who ends up owing money to somebody and he keeps having to like go back and, and get them. And eventually he gets what he wants back from, um, oh, I can't remember the guy's name. Anyway, he played the, the, uh, commander, colonel, something in the, um, that movie was it Jody. Oh, um, I don't remember the name of it now. Anyway, he played a movie with him um, before, and so he played it, and so basically he just had to go back and get it from him and and uh, and like get his revenge or whatever. And I kind of felt like that's what he was doing. He was getting like he was getting revenge for somebody else. He was being the two bit thug for mm-hmm. for his for the grandfather, or like yeah. you know a less a less admirable uh, Charles Bronson type character. I still because that's in my notes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's the end of that one. I really enjoyed it because it was. She really built that like atmosphere of like her like this shop owner who's like working so hard and this guy like basically helps her out and she's like you know what like a chance like let's go <laughs> like I could it's like the um bar one it's like I just need some 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 dick yep at this point and then there were like some feelings involved so like he comes back so I thought this one was more extensive and like there was more surra- it was more depthful in some way like it wasn't just like a quick fuck and then we're friends it was hey thank you for this and he comes back he goes I was dealing with some shit and now I'm back and I would like to continue and we could like have this situation I don't know romance <laughs> this, this, this future together 
I like I said situation. This might also explain why I'm single. Like this situation. <laughs> Whatever this is this is. <laughs> well <Sweet>. hey. <laughs> why not? That's, that's how I describe my relationships. This situation. <laughs> Life is a situation, right? Yeah. Um I did enjoy like her store actually like got really successful and stuff. It was that's like really nice. I was like, oh, yeah, I like it when women succeed yeah. and doing and doing what they love. Like, you know, she's not like doing something else. She's doing something she genuinely loves. It always makes it better. Um, that's all I have on that one. I did enjoy it thoroughly. <laughs> <laughs> I think I wanted to like it, but there were some parts that didn't connect with me. But I thought that it was a really well written story regardless, if that makes sense. Like, I thought that like I, I really I think I wanted more. To kind of flesh out some areas that maybe like, like more of what happened between those three years, I think. Yeah, I like, think like another, that like, would have helped. Two or three pages, yeah. I think that's I think that's what was missing in it because like all the other ones, you see all these growth, and then you see like, you know, she's this way, and then she's this way. But I wanted to see her get that middle, that that success too. Like, mm-hmm. you, you know what I mean? Like, I want to see her flesh that out a little bit more. Or, like, a page for her, like, what she's been doing in the past three years. A page for him, what's happened in the past three years. Yeah, because it's like, well, they never really explain what happened to the grandfather. Like, they I, think like, I, think well, yeah. <laughs> I think he's dead. I think he's dead. I think he's dead, too. But, like, but what I mean is there was no, like, resolution to that. And that was, like, the major force for him being who he was at that time. Yeah. I wanted to have a little bit of that balance out a little bit. Yeah, and I think it's part of it is it is so short. All these are so short that sometimes, like, you feel like... You just needed a couple more pages and you're wondering if she didn't have, like, they wouldn't give her a couple more pages or something. Which is what I think is probably happening because I think some of these were actually printed at other times. So, in other anthologies and stuff. Yeah. But then we have my favorite one. She's so lovely. She's so lovely. I just, uh, first of all, Lovely Singh. And I was just like, that's such a great name. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And... She lives in Indiana. Like, I don't, I think I just really connected because I've lived in rural Ohio near Indiana. I've driven through a lot of Indiana. I understand these towns. <laughs> yeah. Like, I grew up in rural Ohio. Granted, it was near Cleveland, but it was still pretty rural. Like, I get it. Like, you go to these places, you are stuck with the people you've always known. And that's why I moved away. But that's besides the point. Um, <laughs> but it makes so, sense, too. So, yeah. Yeah, it makes so much sense. And so um, she goes to her, like, favorite bar, which is the county line, which I I 110% believe in Indiana. There are several (laughs) dozen bars named the county line that are near the county line or, like, even (laughs) Ohio. Like, it's it's not shocking. Like, (laughs) there's one near my parents that's called uh, Tavern 6 because it's on Route 6. Like, I'm not shocked. It doesn't <laughs> shake. Like, I'm not like, oh, yeah. Um, so he's the silver fox. He's like this older guy. He's owned the bar for 20 years. And I like, Elliot. He could, yeah, Elliot. He could sear panties, sear off panties from across the room with that smile or by tying his hair back or by breathing. And I was just like, <laughs> that's my notes, too. I was like, yep. Which, for the record, if anyone doesn't know, this is basically Roadhouse fan fiction, the movie. So, <laughs> if anyone's wondering, it's literally Sam Elliott in that one gif where he's like pulling his hair back and he puts the the rubber band on and you know he puts it in his, his hair back from Roadhouse. Yeah, that's literally what this speaks. It's just Sam Elliott, and I'm yeah. not mad about it. it me either, because when I was young, when I was like a preteen, I had such a thing for Sam Elliott. I mean, I... that man is like a fine wine. I mean. Would you, if if Sam Elliott walked up to you, would you say no? No, probably. Back then, no. <laughs> well, not back then, back then, but you know, like in my twenties, no. I still feel like I wouldn't say no. He's he's one. Well, it's just a whole like he's like in his seventies now, and I don't want to oh, break. Yeah, him. that's true. That's true. I, I don't want to break the national treasure, so that maybe. Is- <laughs> you don't want to be on what is it? Um, <laughs> sex put me in the ER or something. <laughs> yes. Exactly. With Sam Elliott? <laughs> exactly. I mean, yeah. imagine that NDA anyway. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. So his, part- a- yeah, I was gonna say. Uh, his partner, Johnny Tig, 
um, he was the chaser, and I was just like, <laughs> like, like Elliot is legitimately your dr- like your shot, and then Elliot's the ch- or Johnny's the chaser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Johnny, of course, is named after Johnny from Pat- <laughs> Patrick Swayze and Roadhouse. <laughs> that was his, yeah, because he was named Johnny in uh, Dirty Dancing. See, I have not watched Roadhouse in so long. That's a problem. I've got, got a re- remedy to that. Um, yes. But he, they are, uh, everybody has the rumors that he's sleeping with Elliot in their share of bed. And I was like, okay. And then they bring, they bring select women in with them. <laughs> I just, wait, let me just describe that, like how she describes him. He had shown up a, a few years ago, taken over bartending on weeknights and managing on weekends. Rumor had it that he had taken a spot in Elliot's bed too, and that select members of their female fan club joined them there on occasion. <laughs> I have like that, 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 like those, that entire paragraph is in my notes because I was just like, it was such a good one. It's perfect. Like I love it. It's just great. <laughs> and and lovely and like lovely has been like wanting Elliot since she was like a teenager basically like she's been kind of like panting after him for like what a decade or so at this point yeah so um she comes in basically so long like she's had a day she's yep. had and you know but Elliot like she's busting after Elliot and Johnny Johnny's like the flirt he's like he's the one who like oh and um you know She's like just trying to have a good day. She's had a horrible breakup. Um, what was ah uh, crap? What was her her boyfriend would come in and like basically she'd be home and he'd be there with like other women cheating on her, and they like it's the town bar. Everybody fucking sees you. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's no matter where you are in the world. If you've got one of those little dive, like county dive bars, you always know the gossip that's going on in that little area at all costs. Again, my mom was at a dive bar. Like, she went there for 20-something years. Like, you all knew what was going on in someone else's relationship without question, without thought. It was yeah. what it was. But um, Johnny, like, so you get all three's point of view, which is nice because it's a thruple situation kind mm-hmm. of deal. And, like, Lily kind of gets Johnny's past and everything about him and all of that. And he keeps trying to encourage Elliot being like, hey, she'd be good. She'd be nice. And Elliot's like, nah. He's like, I can't. Um, Because, quote, I've been pouring that girl's drink since she slid me her first legal ID. She's a good girl, Johnny. Don't do it unless you mean it. (laughs) I'm just like, what? I always love that, too, in that situation. It's always like, she's a good girl. What does that mean? What does it mean? I just read one the other day, and they're like, she's a good girl. We can't mess up her life. Like, what having good sex messes up your life right like that's that's one line that always kind of like that puts my hackles up a little bit because it's like you can be a good girl and still enjoy some really dirty sex like doesn't make you less good exactly you're still a good person that doesn't take it away like you can have some really bad sex and be a bad person Mm Hmm. quite frequently actually So, um, Elliot keeps Lily kind of away from there, but, you know, she comes in all, basically, she comes in, keeps, she just always is watching them because, like, they're hot, which, I mean, why not? Get some eye candy, girl. And that's her, and that's her free, like, that's her free, um. Oh, entertainment. Mm hmm. Because it's not like there's anything else to do in that little area, which, again, this is set in the same world as Tika Chance on me, so, like. It's a very insular little town. Like it's rural I mean, Indiana. Go... <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, like, um, she has to go. <laughs> well, I mean, this is like I think this place is actually a little bit further away than the town that she's from. So, uh, yeah, like, yeah, it's like it's rural. Like... Some of those, like I've, yeah, some of those towns, like you have to drive, like almost thirty, forty minutes till you find somewhere like to get stuff, and you're like, okay. Like, it's not fun. I, no. I've definitely lived that life. And you're just like, well, 20 minutes to the grocery store is a short trip. Yep. So, <laughs> I I completely get, like, it, I think that's also partially why it hit home. Because I was like, oh, this is, I know that town. 
I've lived in that town. <laughs> yeah. Like when I lived in Washington Elsewhere. State, it was kind of that town. You have to drive <laughs> 30 minutes to another state to get groceries and affordable gas. Like I've lived that town. Life. Um, so Johnny, she thinks she's getting cut off. And, you know, he, they actually don't which is interesting, and uh, they were like, hey, you want to stay till it closes? And she's like, hells yes. <laughs> like, I've been wanting this for, mm, what, roughly a decade now? Let's go. Uh, since I was 21, thank you very much. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Um, and probably before that, because you know she watched Elliot walk around the town when she was a teen, so tall drink. She sit there with a fan, just be like, oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. Um, they end up, if I remember, going to the bathroom and have a bath. Oh my god, that bathroom encounter! I was like, "Damn, I know, right?" In a stall, in a stall, <laughs> three people in a stall with multiple um, positions. Yes. <laughs> Is it? Um, let me find it. And okay. Um, Elliot, like, yeah, so Elliot takes control. Uh, I just love, he took control easily because we let him. Because that was the only chase that made sense. When Elliot Ransom came to you, you gave up everything and gained everything because of it. I was just like, <laughs> I was like, damn. Um, yep. So he, he uh, he's giving Johnny a hand job, um, and then he's getting her off with her finger, with his finger, so you like, and then they keep they both get off, but he won't. Basically, he Elliot fucks it up. Yeah, and you know, straight up, like really badly fucks it up. Yeah. Um. So all of a sudden, she thinks it's a pity fuck. Yeah. She's, she's like, so this is a, this was a pity fuck. She said her voice flat. Is this some game you two play? Good back, good sex cop, bad sex cop. <laughs> um, with hourly trades off, were you just bored tonight and you finally decided to make uh, decided to make me a contestant? And he agrees. It was fucking beautiful. <laughs> and you know she leaves. Um, and they think it's done, but then the guys really can't get over her. They're like this, like, and Johnny's like, "You fucked up. You done and fucked up." Hmm. Oh yeah. Because he's just like, he's really pissed at Elliot because it, it was a whole thing they were trying to do and, and and Elliot just went completely like he he let his insecurities like ruin something that was going really well. Yeah. And so he feels, and then you see he feels bad because he says she's too young. Like Johnny is too young. And he goes, you two should be together. You two should be together. And he talks about how he used to see her husband come in here he would slow dance with someone else. He'd like basically um, go hook up with someone in the hallway, tip the per- tip someone so they wouldn't be seen. And um, she would like Lily would come in the next night and not know about it. And I was just right. like, oh, and like the whole town knew. Like that's the thing. Yeah. Um, but no one he, would tell her. Yeah, and he's like Johnny. If you want a shot with her, go have a shot with her. We can't like I can't be brought home to like this can't be brought home to Mama. And I was just like, I don't know. I think the world's changing a little bit. Um, I mean, well, I mean, and also like, like how do you know? Because like you you know her from this way, but you don't know her from from a partner point of view either. You don't know what what's accepted and what's not accepted. Yeah. So Lovely stays away for two days. And um, she comes back and she basically dresses like in a fuck me dress like you fucked up. And I was like, yes, girl, make them mad. Like make them realize what they lost. And um, basically they ask her to stay again. They're like, we're going to talk after we close. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they kind of do talk. They also go up to their apartment and, uh, you know, do some shots. (laughs) <laughs> and fuck. <laughs> lots uh lots of things of shots yeah he took a bottle of fireball which made me gag because that is garbage but yeah they tried to give me that when i was a teen and i, I was like 
Can you put it in something else? Put it with cider. It's delicious. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I don't. I have a tiny thing of Fireball that is sitting in my freezer because I don't know what to do with it. But they like the world they, on fire. There's not enough to do that. The world's already on fire too. I'll just drink it if that happens. If the apocalypse finally occurs. Um, but it depends on what world you're setting on fire, doesn't it? That's true. Um, <laughs> it's for when I sit outside with the pizza. That's what I'm going to do before I go. Just take the shot of it. <laughs> so I'll be full, already regretting life. <laughs> See? So it doesn't matter who walks by. You can get your nice little meat cute of whoever walks by. <laughs> I feel like in my neighborhood, I might be lucky if they have a job sometimes. Like, just seeing who walks past. <laughs> Or because I live in the bridal district, they might already be engaged. So there's. But that. Uh, but if we've learned anything from these TV shows, that doesn't matter if they have someone or not. Ain't no ring on that finger. Not yet. Uh, I ain't a home wrecker. I that's <laughs> solid rule. Uh, so basically, Elliot wants to make it up to her, and so does Johnny. So Lily has a great time. Or Lovely has a really great time. I keep thinking of Lily Singh, the YouTube star, and I realize I've said Lily a bunch. I mean, Lovely, not Lily. I might have been picturing Lily Singh in this entire thing, but that's fine, whatever. Um, so, base, and then Lovely reassures Elliot, like, I don't care that you're older. Like, um, age has never mattered to me. The only thing I've ever seen when I looked at you is a man I want. Johnny made a sound of <laughs> made a sound at that. <laughs> I just love that. Like it's like it's, it's fine, it's cool. Age is whatever. And Johnny's just like yes. <laughs> like I've been telling him for twenty years. Yeah, and if I remember correctly, they have sex on the couch, sex on the table, <laughs> and then sex in the bed. And I was just like, get it. Well, I guess you got three different people. You can get lots of positions and lots of. Uh... Yeah, well, mm-hmm. the first one, they were, like, making it up to her. So she got a really great time. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, and... Well-deserved, because yeah. Elliot messed up the, the first time. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, as they, like, they end with, like, fate fate led me to you, Johnny, to, and then it led a, lovely to us. And I was like, that is actually really sweet. Mm-hmm. Way to end it. And the whole book, because it kind of, it, it, like, a lot of fate takes place in these. Well, and also, like, what was interesting is, is in, in the story, the, um, Elliot and Johnny actually kiss in the bar. Mm-hmm. Like, they, they actually, like, they haven't been doing that. Like, they, they haven't been, um, putting their, their desire. Yeah, and, and, well, and their desire, too, like, their, their lust for each other on display. And now, and then it's like, well, why does it matter? Like, we have the bar. We're not going anywhere. There's no other place for them to drink, the rednecks to drink here. And, like, they already throw the racist and the and the bigotry and the and homophobia and all that out the door anyway, so what's, what's the big deal? Like, just be honest with it, because everyone already knows anyway. <laughs> like, it's like, it's those towns, it's the worst kept secret, everybody knows. <laughs> That's what I wrote my lo- my notes, I was just like, like, they all know the the number of women that have gone to bed with you two already know and have already been told the whisper yeah. network's not so quiet in that world yeah and i just love because i mean in those kind of towns there's nothing else to do but gossip sometimes yeah and if it, if they're the only good bar in like the county like people still come to it you gotta get bored of drinking at home eventually and some of those counties are dry, so it might be the only place you can go get a drink. Very footloosey. Yeah. Indiana has a lot of dry counties, if I remember. Portions of them. Yeah. I vaguely remember that from when there was a whole bunch of stuff going on in Indiana a while back. On the news. Because <laughs> Indiana seems to always be in the news. Because it's a Midwestern state, but it's extra conservative. It's like, would you like a, uh, like, Ohio has more, it goes back and forth because we have more cities, but Indiana really only has, like, near Chicago and Indianapolis, and there's a couple, sm- like, m- smaller, medium-sized cities in the south, but you're just like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I've driven the entire state of Indiana, like, would you like to see some cornfields? 
some soybean, <laughs> some more cornfields. Like Indianapolis is pretty big. I'll give them that. But yeah. like in New York, uh, like when you get closer to Chicago, there's more things. But but other than that, there's not a lot. I've driven back road to Indiana, and let me tell you, I got a little scared if I broke down that no one would find me. <laughs> I can believe it. I mean, like my dad. So my dad went to school in South Bend. Um, he mm-hmm. went to he went to a military school there, so he was <laughs> he was from Detroit. Went there for for um, military school, and then they moved to um, the west part of Michigan. Uh, in, okay. in between doing all that, so he was just like he hated being in Indiana, even in the seventies. He was like, "There's nothing here," so he'd get in all kinds of trouble because he didn't want to be in he didn't want to be in the uh, military school and he didn't want to be in Indiana. So <laughs> just like it's fair. Like, Sometimes what? I don't want to be in Ohio, but I've picked nice places. So <laughs> <laughs> at least at least Ohio has more cities. Yeah, yeah. There's. The major ones, I mean, you have the three C's, so you have Cleveland, Cincinnati, Columbus. Then you also have, like, Akron, Canton, and Youngstown, which they're finally not the murder capital of the U.S. They yeah. got it two years back to back. Um, and then there's also Dayton, which is pretty big. But there's, like, there's and like Toledo, and there's a bunch, like, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of cornfields, but it's, like, there's also, it's... You can drive the entire state in five hours. I know. I do it frequently. Um, <laughs> like frequently enough, it's a pro- like alarming. Like, uh, this is not fun. But yeah, I completely get it. And I liked, you know what I also liked about this book? The locations of the stories were all different. Like it wasn't even yes. like it was all the same. So you had DC. I don't know where the cupcake like one was, but you have a good variety of locations and um, situations. Cause I feel like sometimes you get these stories and it's a, it, yeah, they're a little different, but they're kind of, you're like, this is all the same. Yep. And this one was like, um, I'm trying to think. It's like when you get that appetizer sampler, you get the big old one and it has a bunch of different things that are, it's not, everything's not fried. You get, I guess it's like a charcuterie board. Let's go with that way. Let's go yeah. charcuterie board. Because like you you get some jams, you get some bread, some crackers, you get some cheeses, you get some fruits, you get some olives, you get some meat. It's a nice variety that all work together to be a delicious. I'm going to go with dinner because those normally work charcuterie boards are to me. Yes, but, same. And then it's like you a full en- meal. It's a full meal that you can enjoy with a nice full robet- robust wine and enjoy yourself. And That's you can share with other people. Yes. This is very shareable. Like, if someone's like, oh, I don't really like this. You're like, oh, but this one will, like, if they're like, oh, I like this, but not this. Oh, this one's really good for you. That one, like, might not be your favorite, but, or you should try this one. It's a little different for you. Like, I don't think a lot of people, most people wouldn't tend to read Menage a Trois. Like, especially, I don't know, two guys and a girl. But I think it's, like, nice that that's the last one and it has more it has nice complexities. I think it helps with the book ending. Yeah. So you have the the first one is this very strong, like most of them are strong pairs, but the first one's like a strong pair with this complexity of a relationship. And the last one is a complexity of a relationship, but it's three people. So they kind of build, she kind of builds you to get to there. Yeah. So even if you weren't, you're like, I kind of am invested now. So I'm going to keep, I like her style. I'm going to keep reading it and figuring it out. And Yeah. And and like every woman in her, every woman in this collection was very different in their own ways without losing the complexities. Like yes, like the, it wasn't watered down. Like even the ones I did not like or I I didn't have a connection with, I still appreciated the fact that like the women were very individual to their stories. Yes, I did. Yeah, I enjoyed that very much. Um, do we want to rank our favorite ones? Well, I'm pretty sure we all know what my favorite ones were. <laughs> well, like, I was going to say, like, the top one, top down. Yeah. Like, I, like, my favorite was probably in her service, to be honest. Like, that was my, my top. Mm-hmm. That, that just, as someone that's, like, in, going to be 40 in a couple, like, next year, I'll be 40. So, I, there's a lot of value in that story to me personally, in her age and her, her movement and her, um, 
sex appeal at you know over 30 yeah or 25 so to me that's just it's really high on my list and it's an idealized world where women are in power which is such a rare thing yeah in the u.s (laughs) yeah oh yeah in the u.s especially (laughs) okay so that's my my top one is she's so lovely (laughs) i really really loved it because i it like it plays off it's like this the depth of the characters was really interesting because you have like you wouldn't think Elliot would be the one that's the insecure one and like of the three and like him trying to push him away so I thought it was it more interesting also I've discovered I really like like the thruple kind of reading so I don't know what happened I've read across a couple that are like this that are really good but and I love Lovely's character I think she's really interesting and how she's trying to put herself back together after her marriage and just like figuring out how to be who she is in this small town yeah. and you have like the fun mix up with Johnny so it's just a good time and all around and okay. you kind of when well, you also get the feeling that like maybe Lovely wants to be like her cousin Pinky in that way of leaving but she doesn't have the way of leaving yeah so it's a different kind of dream that she's had to force herself after her ex-husband and all that yeah yeah Living in a small town. Uh, my next favorite, though, is in her service because I think I love the age difference. I love that, you know, you have a younger man with an older woman who is very empowered and he's not trying to take away her power. He's not trying to belittle it. He wants to help, like, raise all boats. And they have that and they have that great relationship that you see grow in the year, in the, the time jump, mm-hmm. which was really, really nice. And there's a lot of explanation of things we didn't see on screen without it feeling like you're being told. Like, the way the, the way she statically writes it, it feels like you're actually seeing it even though you're not yeah. seeing it in those moments, which I think is really important. Yeah. What's your second favorite? Uh, Tangled Up in You. That was the X-Men one. This is not a surprise to anybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other ones are kind of all together for me. Like, I like them. They're not, like, top two. (laughs) But I enjoyed them. Like, I wasn't mad that I read it. It's not, like, sometimes where I read things because the summary seems interesting and then I'm, like, I regret the life choices (laughs) and the hour or so I read it. But, I mean, this is a 10 out of 10 would read at the laundromat again. (laughs) Yeah, because, I mean, like, and well, the nice thing is they're, like, they're short stories. Because, like, Tangled Up in You and Have a Little Faith are kind of, like, they're both number two for me. It just depends on my mood mm-hmm. because I, I like the complexity, obviously. Um, and then, the, then, like, it goes, she's so lovely, and then the other two are at the bottom. But they're kind of in the same same mind frame for me. But, like, I think that having this kind of book is really cool because it shows you how easily you can incorporate diversity, not for the sake of diversity, but for the the emotional well-being of the characters that you're reading like you're creating a more complex character that has more not just depth but more i don't even know how to put it but like it's like you know you read some books that have di- that are like diversity books like romances and you're just like oh no no you can definitely is, tell you're not from this culture writing this book it is wonderful to read a book with diverse characters from an author who is not white let's put it that way yeah. Yes, and, and that's that's a romance landing a conversation that keeps happening too, yeah. And it has because it gives it the layers that comes from being in that culture and living like living there and having that in your skin. It's not superficial. It's quite wonderful because like we were talking about with the first one, um you see it when he gives his responses or like just it's the subtle things. It doesn't feel forced. And yes. sometimes when you read those books where you're like, oh, you just needed a person of color. I mean, example, Hallmark and Lifetime, horrible uh-huh. whitewashing problems. When there's a person of color in there, yes. how forced does it feel? Does it feel like they're trying to just put a like us? Oh, I'm trying to think of a you're trying to squeeze a watermelon through a PVC pipe. Yep. That's what it feels like in your brain. You're like, this is, you know how it's so glaringly obvious because you haven't seen a person of color in this movie for 45 minutes. 
why are you suddenly here and why do you have to be the like the sassy black best friend like there was oh god there was one i was watching about a dog and a cat i think um where like someone was staying and they had a dog and then he had a cat i think or the other way around and they didn't the animals didn't go long and they were in the same cabin or something and it was like the 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 black friend had basically been shoehorned in there for the diversity point not for the um this is just my best friend who happens to be black right it, it's like it's it was put in there just to make sure that you know it's oh uh, there were so many i i love those movies do not get me wrong which in and of itself is probably somewhat more than problematic than i realized but um i love them because they have a happy ending and they have a kind of like a sweetness because sometimes mm-hmm. i get sometimes i need that sweetness i, I get tired of all the reality the on fire yeah right and so i mean like that's why on, on the podcast my husband and i recorded those episodes the movies like that's why we watch the movies and that's why we recorded that and that's why we talk about it. because it's nice to have that that conversation because we did it for our patreon um but like you know it's it's very white like have you ever seen the chesapeake show chesapeake shores on no. Hallmark. Okay. So it's got Jesse Metcalf. Jesse Metcalf, I think, I'm pretty sure, is the only person of color. He's Italian. Yeah, but he's representing that idea. In the, in the, you can tell it in the, in the thing. He's supposed to look like more, you know, Mixed. Latin American or Latin American y, you know, like you can tell by the way he's. Anyway. Um, but Which he's is the only like non 20 white times person. problematic. Yeah. Cause, and, you can tell, and you can tell by the, the way they positioned it in the story. Because I watched. All the seasons before I moved here because I was freaking bored. Um, and I was working like, well, I was working like 40 something hours a week in retail. So I needed something that I could just zone out. And it's like eight episodes a season. So, you know, in a week and a half, you've gone through all the, the shows. Yeah. And so, um, but like, you can definitely tell there's a lack of, of diversity in Chesapeake, Virginia. Like, Virginia is not super white. white. Right. Like, I mean, yeah. not not even counting the D.C. part. I mean, like, Chesapeake Shores means Chesapeake Bay, which has got a ton of, you know, of of cultures and backgrounds and ethnicities and races and, like, all these different things. And it's very white. Yeah. It also, it also looks like British Columbia, which confuses me. But anyway, moving on. Um, but, like, you look at it and you're just like, you, you need to, you know, it's like, they just make it look... They, it feels cheapened yes everything feels cheapened because you're like this is not a representation of this area this world and life exactly and like and and finding someone like Suleika I promise you one day I'll get your name I, I promise you promise you um but we'll keep trying until it gets right <laughs> exactly I will try every incarnation of it because I respect her I, I just I feel bad when I say the name is wrong mm-hmm. um because I respect the authors when I'm when I'm you know talking about them um and when I converse with them and stuff like that so fair warning I do talk to her a lot but I talk to her because what she says is smart the intelligence of the women in her book is her natural intelligence mm-hmm. like it's it's clear and it's it's driven and you can find it and you know a lot of the books are not like that you feel like the women are dumbed down and yes. you're just like or placeholders like nothing more than placeholders to, to get the hot guy yeah which is kind of like the, why this podcast exists again because i was like i was tired of that i was like mm-hmm. the women are so important though as women it's written for us so we should be focusing on them yeah i really enjoyed it i thoroughly i you've got to retake take a chance on me I put it in my to be read or my read section of Goodreads, so it'll be on I, that list. I think the guy, um, the, the the guy in that, um, I think he's based on Chris Evans. Oh, I love me some Captain America. <laughs> so does she. <laughs> I he's a say, beautiful, beautiful <laughs> man. I want to say, and he's um, just a beautiful beard. human being. I want to say it's him with like a little bit scruff. Um, I think that's was- kind of Chris Evans. So he's Captain America when he's like not doing well. Got it. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so that's this great. Like she's she's got this like really nice way of you can see who they are when she talks about it online. And you can say, oh, yeah, that's why it was familiar. Of course, when I read it, I was imagining Jax from Sands of Ar- San- Sons of Anarchy. Um, Never seen or- that. 
Uh, he was also the guy in Pacific Rim, Charlie Hunnaman or whatever his name is. Hunnaman, yeah, yeah, the Brit, yeah, yeah. Um, I I don't particularly find him attractive, so I was glad. No, it was more Chris Evans. Uh, <laughs> so I was a little confused on that one, but it there's just very something very um unifying in all her work, mm-hmm. where all where all the women know themselves and they know their place, the the place within their their selves, not within the society. Because yeah, they all kind of make their own. Mm-hmm. They're comfortable. They know they're comfortable. They know their worth, and they kind of know what they want, even if they don't think they should have it. They're like, you know, this is not always the best idea for this X Y Z, and then they they kind of figure out if they're going to have it or if it just needs to be temporary. That's what I liked about it too. There was like some that was like, this is just temporary. Like we don't have to. Like this is a good thing for right now for me right now, but it's not doesn't have to be a relationship which. I kind of like, because romance novels always seem to have, like, oh, that they have to end up together. It's like, why? That's not how life works. Oh, because it's the ATA. I know. <laughs> Just then again, it's... I did watch 365 Days, so <laughs> that doesn't have a happily ever a- after. Sorry to spoil that for you. But it's really problematic. So... <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of why I avoided it. I was like, I could have found it on other sources, and I was just like, because we don't have Netflix at US over here, and like Netflix Germany is just sad. Um, but <laughs> it just kind of is what it is. But like, um, it's it's nice to have people that maybe find friendship instead of like you know everlasting lust, because like sometimes they end up always lusty, and you're just like. Okay, but the less is gonna fade in like six months, guys. What's gonna happen then? Like, I don't, sometimes I don't have that I'm, investment in you. Sometimes I'm just like, I'm tired. Like, I'm tired for you. Like, I'm just real tired. Like, I, I mean, you guys have been going for like six days straight. Like, did you get Gatorade? Like, have you <laughs> ate? Have you ever read those? You're just like, are you okay? But like, are you okay? Yeah, like a lot of the like a lot of the wear books or like the Laura Lee books, for instance. <laughs> like. I'm like, did you eat? <laughs> have you, I mean, besides each other, but like, have you ate? <laughs> did someone bring you a snack? <laughs> did you have some water? Huh? Like, are you dehydrated? Like, have oh you taken God. a shower in any all this time? Because no, that's they always a lot take of showers calls. together, and that leads to more. That's <laughs> in those books, they always take a shower together because, like, the guy, I don't know, can't separate himself. Oh, God. We'll have to review those because. When I I, fun. I got the first three done and I'm just like <laughs> I can't I can't help it. They sometimes they just make me laugh because I'm like I'm suspending de- belief right now. Oh and you then, have to. And then some of the shit I'm just like <laughs> <laughs> oh. like at one point there's like they're like there's caves and stuff like that and I'm just like they hook up in a cave, and I was just like, there's so many problems with this. Like, you know, they're, you're looking for explosives. That's the problem. You shouldn't be doing that there. Not safe. <laughs> Don't worry, it explodes after they get out. But, like, it's still, like, the orgasm, like, triggers it, I guess. But it's just... Oh, it's just... There's so... I... I love those kind of books, though. Those are, like, my kind of, like... They were so bad, they were funny. Yes! Yeah. It's and, not- and, it, and it's not, like, a value judgment bad. It's just, like, there are certain plot points where you just go, I don't think that's how that's how logic works. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. I, <laughs> I'm still laughing about the stupid barb, though. Oh, we all are. <laughs> like, like I told you when, <laughs> before we started recording... Like, the first time I ever read it was in an anthology, and I was just like, wait. Oh, that's even worse. That's even worse, because you're not, you're really not expecting it. Like, there's no, like, I partially built this world. It's like, and there's other things. So you come in from something else, and then you're just like, say what? And that was exactly my reaction. I was like, no, wait a minute, there's a barb? I'm sorry, wait, hold on. It's really like a cat, there's an, a dog, and there's, there's a barb? Yeah. I'm sorry. But the good thing is the third one is between a female the female cat and I was just like, okay. Like I was like, at least I don't have to read about that again. Like that is the perk, is you're just like, this is not coming up again. 
And it, but it also helps too because you're just like, okay, I don't I, like her body probably can handle the barb. Not sure all the, the the human females can handle the barb. Human women don't seem to be equipped for that particular. Yeah. Because because don't they talk about like in some parts the ones I read they talk about like having like how it was like weird and I was like I can imagine so. There's, it says it feels like a finger like a fingernail and I was just like oh god. Mm. I don't want a fingernail. <laughs> I think they literally curled up into a ball. I think I was like, no, no, thank you. And the, like we've talked about, they the guys never say anything. Mm-hmm. They just let it happen. And I was just like, what? That's just rude. I'd be like, no. But yeah, but the, uh, we need to stop talking about these books because we'll never get out of here because we're going to have so. <laughs> I know. And my poor dog probably has to go pee. It's 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. Um. Okay. So <laughs> before we go, like usually I promote a podcast. Um. So, but now you get to promote a, a podcast. So what's like, what's one podcast you want the listeners to actually listen to besides yours, obviously? Um. Oh God, that's so hard. If well, since we talked about Indiana today, and I'm friends with Danielle, you should check out Who's Your Homicide. It is a podcast about true crime in Indiana by Hoosiers for everyone else. So, <laughs> and they're like, they're crude. They, they, they make crude jokes and all the cases tangentially connect to Indiana. And I really loved the first one because it was dealing with the house blowing up in their neighborhood. And it's, so it's Danielle and her husband and her sister do it. So it's like a really nice kind of fun, lighter, true crime-esque one so it's not super dark cool see i like that um let's see and is there any books that you want to read in the next like week that you're not reading now off of radish (laughs) (laughs) so i'm still working my way through lisa renee jones i'm working through the walker series but she has created this whole world with the walker security i started with um a dirty rich cinderella so there's like the Dirty Rich series, but I'm trying to read my way through it. I'm on the second series. So my goal is to finish that series this week. And I'm really excited because I love her writing. And I think the like she has really good female characters. She has really good. Some of the male characters are kind of similar, but like I think the situations are really unique. And it's different than some like what I've read. And it's not too insane like there are calm moments unlike some romances where you're just like I'm tired for you like I'm (laughs) exhausted (laughs) I highly recommend her stuff though cool um apparently my word of the day is cool right now (laughs) Uh, um let's see is there anything else you want to say before you before we leave I guess I was gonna say you leave I'm like no I have to leave too um please wear a mask I would like (laughs) to stay working Please yes. stop the pandemic. Please. <laughs> I can't stay in my house for three months again. I'm going to lose it. <laughs> Please wear a mask. Even if you don't think it helps, it is literally a piece of cloth over your face. <laughs> An inconvenience so everyone can go back to work is worth it. <laughs> I can't deal with phase one again, guys. Please. Please. The better question is, have you, have you even left phase one yet in America yet? I mean um ohio has i don't know what phase we're on but i know we've left phase one because we've reopened things and i could get a haircut and like go different places but yeah i would i would like to stay in this situation (laughs) so please social distance please wear a face mask i would like to continue working yeah Yeah. (laughs) makes sense to me it's nice to have money coming in when you have to pay rent yes um (laughs) Especially because uh, the U.S. does not have a social safety net feature and all our states are going bankrupt. This is really happy news. <laughs> Just why I've been reading romance novels because it's better than the world outside. And I can't check the news that much because it makes me drink all the bourbon I have. Well, I'm, I'm laughing in part because um, that sounded like something that you see on the Cody Johnson uh, some more news on, mm-hmm. on YouTube. If you ever need to like side eye anyone in politics he's probably already put a video up about it mm-hmm. you, you he's probably up your alley on the on the what the mm, dude yeah <laughs> he also promotes face masks a lot 
I mean, it, <laughs> it's the simplest thing we can do. Besides bathing in Purell. Um, but that hurts. Also, you have to try and find it. Yeah. So, just be kind to other humans and courteousness with masks. Please. Please. I'd like to keep, wor- keep working, guys. <laughs> Okay, and where can people find you? <laughs> uh, after I after I have my third mental breakdown about the pandemic, uh, yeah, uh, you can find me at the Cult of Domesticity on Facebook or on Instagram at Domestic Podcast for Facebook and Twitter on all podcatchers. I'm trying to get back on regularly posting my podcast. Like I said, the quarantine has not been nice to me, <laughs> so. I fully understand that prospect and that and that direction, so I can't say anything. <laughs> and it's taken us three months to do this. <laughs> Precisely. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for being on, Courtney. We'll be back and probably talking about the, the breed books because we have bar, a lot bar, of feelings. Bar, 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 bar. <laughs> we have so many feelings. I think we're also punch truck, so we should end now. <laughs> oh, okay, let me stop recording. Oh, you know it's only two hours, so whoever has to edit is gonna have a great time. As promised, let us discuss the podcast reviews. I'm sorry, guys. I keep forgetting to read these aloud. I do read them online, and they make my whole face smile big and happy and bright so here is a review from advanced tv her story on itunes and it says it's titled refreshing old stories and characters smart well-reasoned and timely analysis of what we've read and need to read to help us become better feminist if this were a class you could have taken in college you would have with your best buds and thank you so much for that that's a really big compliment to me i can't explain to you how much it is because I sometimes think maybe I'm a little bit spacey and so to know that I'm not and my ADHD is actually working occasionally is very, very fun for me. I want everyone to enjoy what they're reading and I want you guys to enjoy what's happening. So awesome possum. Now, if you would like to leave a review on iTunes or whatever podcaster that you listen to, that would be great. If you want to send me the reviews in case I can't find it, since it's sometimes hard to, to gather all the little links and the places that you can be listed at, I would adore you. <laughs> you can email them to damselspodcast at gmail.com and I will go run them and I will read them and I will smile and I will be happy and you will make me the happiest host in the world. I'm really enjoying getting to know you guys and you guys getting to discuss what's going on. If you want to follow us on Twitter, you can find us at Damsel's Podcast. Same thing with Instagram and Facebook, although I'm awful about updating those two things. I have them. Guys, we're lucky we're doing Twitter. Uh, (laughs) If you want to find us on Patreon, we have some more stuff coming out. I'm sorry, I've been a little bit lax this month. I've been getting ready to move, so I've been trying to get stuff together and trying to find, you know, little different things to add in. But you can find us there on patreon.com slash damsels podcast i try to make it easier for everyone to find me i promise next week or rather the next episode will feature carrie purvis and we're reading once ghosted twice shy by Alyssa cole and it's going to be a fun episode full of enjoyment and vigor and just happiness i think if we're going to record that this week it will appear <laughs> around early august and then I have a few more things that are be coming up. I have Edge of Survival by Tony Anderson, which we recorded with Becky from Too Stupid to Live, which is fun. I enjoy that podcast so much. So I'm really glad that she wants to be on. That will be sometime in August as well. Thank you for your patience. I am going to buckle up and get everything going as fast as I can and make sure everything is going to release during my move so that way you guys are not going to have interrupted service. And on that end, I want to thank my patrons, Carrie Purvis and DM Elms, for always, you know, being there and supporting us. It means a lot. I, I'm going to bring you guys more content. I actually have a couple things coming up because I have a Body Bookworms box that will be coming soon. And I can't wait to open that and share it with you guys because it's got American Love, a book I've been waiting so long to read. 
and that will have a Patreon only unboxing because, you know, this is not a visual podcast. It's not a vlog. And if you would like to appear on the podcast, again, please contact me at damselspodcast at gmail.com because I would love to have you. I want you guys to explore and I want to build a relationship with you guys. And I think that's really important for me. So email me. I promise I don't bite. I look forward to seeing you guys soon. I can't wait to record from the new space that I'll be in in a relatively short manner. Just be kind to each other, guys. Wear a mask. Let us repeat this. Wear a mask. Save lives. Very simple. Just go be happy. Go find one thing every day that is full of joy. It doesn't matter if it's eating a graham cracker. It doesn't matter if it's looking outside and seeing a pretty cloud. Just find something that brings you joy because everyone should have joy every day of their life. Even if it's the smallest thing you can't find. As someone who suffers from depression, I get it, and I think everyone should be joyful. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye!